and uh, last time we talk about John Wycliffe and uh, we started also last week last week with Desiderius Erasmus so I think kay John Wycliffe it took us two weeks also at gayon kay Desiderius Erasmus ay yun yung second ano po natin po mga kapatid it would uh, sa so second na siguro na week natin ngayon so uh, praying po mga kapatid na ma magamit itong lesson po natin ngayon na ma-inspired po tayo, ma ma-bless po tayo, ma-encourage po tayo sa sa uh, buhay po ng mga ginagamit ng Panginoon. So last time po mga kapatid, when we talk about sa buhay ni Erasmus, of course we talk about sa kanyang life and um, we discuss doon sa kanyang early days, early life, simula nung bata pa siya po mga kapatid, how he, his, his parents raised him. Ang kanyang mga parents ay mga copyist or mga scribes, mga kapatid. Uh, nakuha niya yung kanya pong, kanya pong gift din, of course. Ang kanyang, I mean, talent sa pag, ano po, pag transcribe is galing sa kanyang parents. Simula pa, just like Second Timothy 3.15 and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. So, isa sa trabaho ng kanyang tatay po mga kapatid is tagakopya ng manuscript. Okay, taga-kopya ng manuscript po. Yun ang kanyang parents. At at the age of, ano po mga kapatid, early age, pinaaral po siya sa school doon po sa Holland po mga kapatid, which is his hometown, okay? In Netherlands po mga kapatid. And makikita po natin sa Holland po mga kapatid, ang kanya pong nag-aaral po siya for six years sa isang school po mga kapatid ng pagkakapi ng manuscript. So nakukuha po niya. And uh, their location is in Holland, and of course, doon they have escaped many things uh, of the heresies of the the Catholic Church, po mga kapatid, because that's a Protestant place, Protestant country, po mga kapatid. And uh, of course, nandun pa rin yung Catholics, okay? So when namatay ang kanyang parents, when Erasmus' parents died at early age, po sa kanyang buhay, so. We know he was eager na mag-aral sa isang university. By the way, kailangan nating alamin anong kinalaman ni Erasmus sa Pure English Bible kasi si Erasmus naman ay ang sinulat naman niya, ang translate naman niya hindi naman English, eh, Greek naman eh. Now we know that po mga kapatid. But he has a, a very pivotal ano po mga kapatid contribution sa ating English translations lalo sa English Bibles which we are going to learn later on. So that's why we are studying Erasmus. Ay kasi sa last part natin, Erasmus is represented today. Is represented to, misrepresented po mga kapatid. Uh, wrong spelling, ay kulang ang word. That is misrepresented, not represented, but mis... Okay, represented today. So um, may iba silang konsepto, but... Tayo mga Bible believers who appreciate that we have a perfect Bible and uh, we also appreciate the people of God na kanyang ginamit. That's why we studied about these things. Okay? So nung namatay ang kanyang parents, mga kapatid, although he wanted to go to, like to go to the universities, pero ang kanyang, per, ang kanyang guardian na pumalit po sa kanya, sa kanyang parents, ang kanyang guardian prevailed okay, uh, on Erasmus and also sa kanyang mga kapatid. Uh, prevailed that they they should enter into monasteries. So right after po namatay po mga kapatid, that little Erasmus, although he's the heir of some fortune ng kanyang parents po mga kapatid, but um, they were, uh, he was a force according to him na mag-aaral po ng, uh, sa monasteryo po, sa monastery po mga kapatid. Nagiging monk po si Erasmus po mga kapatid at uh, at early child na trinain po siya lahat. Ang term niya doon, he was actually kidnapped para lang nandun para magpunta doon. So he was threatened, he was harassed, he was ano po mga kapatid, frightened. Okay? And he was beaten and crushed their spirit and tamed them. So nagiging monk po siya doon. And uh, of course, exploited by the mga priests and monks na nandun they were caressed they were uh, they were employed in cantation and exhortations and uh, exorcisms I'm sorry 
at lahat ng iyon na madami nangyayari. So he detailed that, nabasa natin, napag-aralan natin yan last week. Okay, para siyang may mga testimonies siya na nabasa natin sa kanyang personal biography, life account, kung paano po nag-take advantage sa kanya yung mga cardinals, ano, mag-take advantage yung mga mga priest na nandun po sa mon- monasteries po mga kapatid. So, ganun. I, I don't have to go back kasi ang dami natin pag-usapan. Tapos, of course, um, uh, he, he made a pledge yung monk, mga kapatid and in obedience doon. And, um, uh, but according to him po mga kapatid, sabi niya, a monk's holy obedience consists in what? Sabi niya, in leading an honest, unchaste, and sober life. Sabi niya, this is his testimony. Sabi niya, no. At not the least, sabi niya. A monk may be a glutton, may be a drunkard or a whoremonger, an ignorant, stupid, malignant, envious, brute, sabi niya. But he has broken no vow. He has only to be slave of superior as good for nothing as himself. So it's just slave. Pero siya, iba, when he pledged po mga kapatid, sabi niya, the words were forced into my mouth, sabi niya, and choked him as he spoke his ascent. Amen. He choked his neck para lang siya mag He was like a handcuffed prisoner in a clutches of the police and and he, he was forced to make a vow and 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 it was twisted out of him po mga kapatid. Yun po yung account mismo ni Erasmus. Siya yung nagsabi po mga kapatid. So, yun po ang nangyayari so hindi talaga siya nagbibigay ng totoong pledge or vow po doon so of course po mga kapatid pagkatapos niya sa kanyang monk na buhay hindi siya hindi siya nagpractice na pagkapari hindi siya nag nagpractice na pagmisa but rather pagkatapos niya doon he did not proceed doon sa mga ministerial work ng priesthood but rather he went to Paris so this is his life in Paris po mga kapatid, okay? So baka hindi niyo mabasa so but in Paris no. Munta siya sa Paris and where he experienced first for the first time liberty sa kanyang buhay. Amen. So yung pagka-Augustinian po niya hindi niya dinala kasi that was an Augustinian monastery po ang kanyang pinasukan. So hindi niya dinala ang kanyang pagka-Augustinian, hindi siya nagpa-practice na mag kandak na mga misa at mga, uh, mga pagpapari po mga kapatid but rather he went to to ano sabi niya to Paris to study also he went to to study in the University of Paris po mga kapatid uh, for a doctorate of theology so nagproceed siya for doctorate for theology according to Erasmus sabi niya I must acquire the absurd title of doctor although he doesn't like to be called doctor, but he must acquire the title of doctor and it will not make me a hair the better. This is what he said. And I have to fight with monsters, then I must wear the dress of Hercules. So we talked about that last time. Para kasi he is determined, mga kapatid, to expose kung anong buhay sa monasteries, kung anong buhay ginagawa ng mga priests doon. So para is to fight for with monsters, sabi niya, Okay, to, to fight with monsters, I must wear the dress of Hercules. Ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, he has to equip himself with with some ano po, um, armor or with some knowledge para how could he com- combat doon po sa, sa kanyang magiging kalaban po mga kapatid. And for the first time, when he studied doon po sa University of Paris for a doctorate doon sa theology, he was free in his life po mga kapatid. And he was around in the middle or late twenties ng kanyang pag-aaral po ng doctorate doon sa Paris po mga kapatid. And uh, nag- nagiging independent scholar po siya. Uh, independent of a country. So he's not representing any country. There is no academic ties sa kanyang buhay. Or there is no religious alliance sa kanya po mga kapatid. And he maintained that independence of everything that could could interfere sa kanya or that could that would uh, that could compromise his liberty po mga kapatid to exercise his intellect and freedom of his literacy expression and he he freed himself from any entanglement 
So doon po, wala po siya, hindi po siya nagpapa-affiliate to anything. So truly, nag, nag-aaral po siya. Habang nag-aaral po siya sa Paris, ang kanya pong mga classmates, na-discuss po natin yan, si Ignatius de Loyola, if you know, Ignatius de Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit Society, po mga pted, or uh, yung arm ng Catholic, and uh, also a well-known Martin Luther. I mean, a well-known John Calvin po mga kapatid, not Martin Luther, John Calvin. Classmate po niya doon sa kanyang doctorate doon sa University of Paris. So makikita mo, makarelate ka dito that Erasmus was a contemporary to these famous men in history po mga kapatid. Of course, Erasmus is very popular, famous if you are a lover of history, a reader of history. You, you will always, I mean, entangle. This is because this is a prominent man. Okay? Prominent man. Dito po si si tong si Erasmus po mga kapatid sa history po mga kapatid okay so with that regard also po mga kapatid of course pinakita niya doon and um gaano itong si Calvin and si Loyola ay hindi siya nagsasubmit si Loyola adhere always patuloy doon sa Catholic thinking ng sadistic Catholic thinking kaya siya nagiging arm siya nagamit siya ang nagfound doon sa Jesuit society. If you'd like to learn about the history of the Jesuits, mga kapatid, you may search it down and how many parang, parang they're considered as the private army of Rome. Private military of Rome. They're not physical military but spiritual military ng Rome na para sa kanilang... Re- Ngayon, wala ng Jesuits, no? Na, I mean, hindi na ganun ka, kagaya dati na talagang they are sent to spy out, they're sent to destroy at ngayon, mayroon ng mga tinatawag na mga defenders, Catholic faith defenders, pero iba yung mas matindi yung sa Jesuits po mga kapatid. We'll, have, we'll talk about another lesson on that po mga kapatid. And you know, John Calvin, and he was really against John Calvin, most especially dun sa, sa ano po, teachings ni John Calvin sa election at saka predestination. Okay, so na, na, napag-usapan po natin yan po mga kapatid. And pagkatapos dun, pagka-graduate niya dun sa... Uh, pumupunta po siya doon sa Paris and ang kanyang purpose pagkalabas niya from the monasteries pumunta siya para pupunta papasok sa mga libraries so na enjoy niya yung mga library doon sa sa Paris po mga kapatid sa mga universities doon pagkatapos ng nagraduate by the way anong purpose niya sa mga library to search ng mga ano po mga uh, scriptures yung mga mga ancient copies and scriptures So with that aim sa kanyang buhay, pumunta po siya pagkatapos niya mag-graduate, he went to Italy to the to Rome mismo. Pumunta siya po mga kapatid for manuscripts. So Erasmus moved to Italy to visit libraries. Isa po yung hindi para mag-aral ngayon, mag to visit libraries kasi tapos ng kanyang doctorate, he has somehow a reputation and a name na pwede na siyang irespeto, pwede na siyang makilala sa mga sa mga mga religious leaders. So, he moved to Paris po. I moved to Italy po mga kapatid to visit libraries. And alam mo, uh, it attracted him kasi ang collections ng mga Catholic na nakukuha nila galing sa kanilang mga mga conquest and con- uh, pagka-conquer po mga kapatid at yung mga spoils, dinilagay nila doon sa doon sa Italy in, a, in many libraries po mga kapatid including yung mga manuscripts na kinuha galing sa mga sa mga Waldensians, sa mga, yung mga ancient, mga ano po mga kapatid, uh, galing sa mga Anabaptist, yung iba sinunog, yung ibang mga copies, dinala po nila sa, sa mga libraries, in many libraries sa Italy. At ang karamihan doon ng mga priests, ng mga bishops, meron silang sariling mga collections, kasi yun ang mga collections nila dati, no? yung mga ancient na mga manuscripts po mga kapatid. At very common po yun sa time na yun na kinokollect nila. Okay, yun yung mga collection ng mga religious leader back then. Parang may may somehow dating kapag mayroon ka. Ngayon, mga mga pastors ngayon, padamihan na ng books. Paramihan na ng books sa library. Sa, dati, wala pa namang ganung mga compiled books at madami. So, manuscripts naman ang kanila pong mga collections dati. So, he visited a lot of a lot of places in Italy and Erasmus was in Italy and he spent all of his time devouring the libraries there. And he befriended so many bishops, so many, so many people who owned the library. And talagang niransak po niya. At talagang 
I mean, ransack in a sense na wala siyang pinalagpas at bawat punta niya may nakukuha siyang at na, natutunan siya at nakokopya. Kasi remember, kinokopya lang mga mga scriptures dati, nakokopya siya ng mga manuscripts, ng mga Greek manuscript, Latin manuscripts, at other manuscripts na nandun po mga kapatid. So, uh, nakikita niya doon, no? so, napakadami. So, the Vatican libraries, napuntahan niya po mga kapatid, naging kaibigan niya, maraming pare po mga kapatid, and providing him some, some, ano, some um, access sa kanilang mga library po mga kapatid. So, Although po mga kapatid, yung mga mga books na yon, isa providence no, mga manuscript na yon, uh, may instance po sa Italy po mga kapatid na sinunog lahat ng mga libraries. And that was right after po mga kapatid na, uh, na, na natapos lahat, natapos lahat ni ni ano, na natapos niya ma-print ang kanyang tatlong edition kasi na, nakuha na lahat ni Erasmus bago nasunog ang ang Italy By, because dumating sinige po kasi ng France po mga kapatid ang Italy po mga kapatid at nangyayari isa po sa mga nagiging casualty doon sa war is yung mga library doon po mga kapatid mga beautiful library doon sa doon sa Italy so of course we learned in in Psalm 76 verse number 10 surely the wrath of men shall praise thee So although nakuha nila yung mga nakuha nila yung mga scroll na yon, mga manuscript na yon by destroying the families, villages at na preserve pa rin sa mga libraries nila. But even so, ginamit pa rin ng Panginoon yun para makuha din ni Erasmus lahat ng mga remains ng mga Anabaptists, ng mga Waldensians, sa mga Donatists, sa mga Paulicians, sa mga Bible believer that time during sa dark ages after the uh, kasi yung time na ito po mga kapatid na nasa dark ages pa rin tayo under pa rin to ng consider ang dark ages kasi 1400 no si Erasmus born is 1466 so makikita po natin no so tapos po mga kapatid yon so nakuha niya lahat and tapos bago na sunog So hindi na natin kailangan ng endless genealogies na sobrang daming ganun kasi na-preserve na din sa sa Greek New Testament ni Erasmus. And ka, kahit wala pang ganun, but bas nakuha na po ng nila. So while he was in Italy, you know, madami po siyang na marami po siyang na na ano po do na na win, marami siyang na na kaibigan. Kaya nga uh, Pumunta po siya doon. Pagkatapos niya po mga kapatid, he stayed in Italy only long enough mga kapatid okay, to, to study all their libraries for manuscript. And after that, he spent the rest of his life in England and the Protestant Northern Europe po mga kapatid where he had been reared. Because he's a Dutch. So he lived in, there in Europe and learned many and most especially in England po mga kapatid where it paves the way it paves the way sa mga famous translators you know pag-usapan natin tong Greek New Testament editions po niya at sino po yung magiging, mga influence po diyan po mga kapatid na makikita po natin okay so after that bumalik na po siya sa Eng England and most of his time was spent in England and also po sa northern Protestant uh, Europe po mga kapatid Okay, now, let's go now po mga kapatid. Dito po tayo, titingnan po natin yung Erasmus Greek New Testament. So, dahil it would point out dito sa kanya pong, sa anong contribution niya sa mga pure English Bibles po mga kapatid. So, let's look at Erasmus Greek New Testament. So, let's continue sa atin pong story. No? So, once Erasmus arrived, okay, in somewhat a safe harbor of his own Protestant Europe po mga kapatid. Nakabalik po siya doon and he could now publish the scriptures. He could now publish the scriptures after all the time of research spent doon sa France, spent doon sa Italy po mga kapatid. After all of that po mga kapatid, lahat ng, ng research niya, it is now time He is now ready. He has now all the resources. He has now all the equipment po mga kapatid to publish the scriptures. 
So the text po mga kapatid that he had seen as a child, yung bata pa siya po mga kapatid in handwritten form, okay, handled in great libraries and homes of Europe and England po mga kapatid, heard and preached from the pulpits of humble churches shared by the devout Christians who had hidden them in their heart po mga kapatid. Okay? Uh, handwritten Greek New Testament abounded throughout Europe na and particularly in Greece. So, kasi wala pang printing press po na yun. Pero sa time nang he's about to print, okay, or is at the time that he's now making uh, his Greek New Testament po mga kapatid, and uh, the printing press was a new invention. Pero nung bata pa siya, it was a copied na yung printage ng preacher. It is, it is a copied or handwritten na scripture. Yung shinare nila habang nag-witness sila, it's a handwritten. So yung Bible nila, it's handwritten po mga kapatid. But sa time niyang, he's about to print, to, about to make his New Testament Greek text po mga kapatid. The printing press, ayun po yung pinaka latest invention ng panahon po nila. And Erasmus was the first, amen, to marry this new iron soldier, amen, uh, with the text of the ancient handwritten Greek text. Siya yung una pong nag, nag ano po, take advantage po nito, nagamit. So una niya sinulat, tapos pinapapublish niya in print na po, mga kapatid. Kaya marami siyang editions kasi may mga maraming mga printing errors. Marami pong mga problema. Of course, bago, bago pa ang printing press and this time so he developed into five editions mga kapatid na makikita po natin in which we're going to discuss sa kanyang Greek New Testament po mga kapatid so in Erasmus Greek New Testament were lovingly woven many threads of the past so remember itong ang itong kanyang Greek text is a byproduct of all the com combination of many many manuscripts that he have searched and and ano po mga kapatid and devoured, let me use the term loosely, doon sa mga great libraries kung saan siya napunta. He now start to draw his text from a lifelong friendship and lifelong journey with manuscript of the Bible. So even uh, at very early age, he was already engaged with the manuscripts through his fathers until he graduated from the monasteries until he reached to the universities and 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 walk on for how many years could you imagine po mga kapatid from 16 uh, 1466 po mga kapatid pagpasok niya doon nakalabas po siya nakalabas po siya doon sa Italy po mga kapatid bumunta po siya sa pumunta po siya doon sa pumunta po siya doon sa England mga around 1500 po mga kapatid so just think of how many years from 1466 to 1500 so for for ano po mga kapatid for more than ano, 30 years he was in search doon po sa ano he studied these ano po manuscripts and get all the getting na makukuha po niya po mga kapatid amen and para makapag-create lang po ng 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 new testament greek text po mga kapatid so that's his intimacy with Bible manuscript. That was his obsession. Kumbaga, may say that kanya obsession with manuscripts carried with it starting ng bata pa siya hanggang siya ay na, nagiging, nagiging educated po mga kapatid. And uh, carried with him uh, in it the knowledge of the just what the Bible said in the multitude of multiple vernacular editions po mga kapatid. A multitude of vernacular editions which covered Europe preached by the Christians, preached by the by the persecuted believers po mga kapatid, but their works have been preserved. And it, it fascinated Erasmus po mga kapatid sa mga time na yun. Okay? He did not create the text. I'd like you to understand that Erasmus did not create the text. Okay? He did not create the text po mga kapatid. He was merely the hub. He was just merely collecting from which the printing press, okay, will spawn the standard and text out to scores and scores of people to many, many, many people po mga kapatid, who had never seen before a printed Greek New Testament. So I'd like you to understand that it was not really his, actually his translation, but he was just copying, combining all ng mga nakukuha niya, ng mga manuscripts po mga kapatid, putting together po mga kapatid, 
And for the first time, nababasa ng napakarami ang kanyang Greek New Testament printed po mga kapatid. Marami-raming nakakaintindi ng Greek. Remember, karamihan po sa, sa time ng, na nasa Italy, nakakaintindi pa marami sa kanila ng, ng Greek po mga kapatid. And uh, nakita niyo po, no? so siya po ay ginamit po niya yung ano po na yon yung kanyang passion po na yon para po may providean po ang mga tao po ng ng Biblia. So uh, he's just copying. Uh, again, he's not actually translating but but uh, Erasmus was just copying po mga kapatid. Copied out the scriptures. Okay? And they, he only collect the works of another. It was not actually his life his lifelong work is just to collect. But it was not to translate po mga kapatid. He was it was just he's just the one who collect it. Parang scribes. Hindi naman sila ang gumawa noon eh, nang kinopya lang nila kasi yun ang trabaho nila taga kopya. Sa kanya kinopya po niya po mga kapatid at he put it in print sa new printing press po mga kapatid. Amen. So he did not create it, the text, okay? And and he has this love of the Lord po mga kapatid. He, uh, he's the, he has this love for the Lord. He has this in-depth knowledge concerning the Greek language and profound knowledge when it comes to the scriptures and and their accurate readings po mga kapatid. And the readings of the Erasmus Greek New Testament were so profoundly correct. They were so profoundly correct yung kanyang reading ng ng ano po and because from birth to death from birth to death po mga kapatid like you to understand that his life was immersed in the bible and in the manuscript yan from birth to death now i'd like you to understand he died at 1536 and the last edition of his ano po is 1536 of his greek edition okay ang kanyang Greek text edition po mga kapatid 1536 you imagine that from from birth from the from the ano po profession of his father all the way to his death he bathed himself po mga kapatid he immersed his life in the bible and in the manuscript po mga kapatid kaya by 1500 by 1500 at approximately at the age of 34 po mga kapatid kita mo the age of 34 okay He had formed his resolve, okay, to study and edit. This is the time. Paglabas niya sa Italy, this is the time that he already formed the resolve. Lahat na nakuha niya, lahat na napag-aralan niya, is now he's going to apply it by to study and to edit the the Greek text of the New Testament as distilled essence of the real Christianity, which in the judgment of reformers and humanists alike had overlaid and concealed po mga kapatid by dogmas and uh, accretions of centuries po mga kapatid. So after all of that, he was collecting all the Greek texts. He become also familiar and oriented. Erasmus become familiar and oriented also of the, the serious errors of the Latin Jerome Vulgate. You know the corrupt versions of Latin Jerome Vulgate. That's why it 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 gave him more motivation so that he could produce a pure text, because the one that's dominating is in Latin and it's in Jerome Vulgate, po mga kapatid. At he studied, po mga kapatid. Erasmus had seen the manuscript of Lorenzo Valla. Okay, ah, he he pointed, he annotated, abang sa kanyang pag-aral, po mga kapatid, that. Vala noted po mga kapatid uh, some serious errors of the Vulgate po mga kapatid. And div he devoted much of his careers po mga kapatid the task of developing or refining and extending Vala's methods si Erasmus. So he, he studied while he was in Italy. He was very familiar with the errors of the Jerome Vulgate which is now the mother of the NIV the mother now of, of what we call the the Greek text of the Westcott and Hort, and the rest po mga kapatid, the modern version. So at, as early as 1500, it was exposed po mga kapatid. Mga kapatid, lahat ng ito. So Erasmus continued to to study what Vala, Vala's method 
have, have started po mga kapatid, and even refined it and even ano po develop it po mga kapatid, and extend to see more errors doon po sa Latin Jerome Vulgate that dominated starting po mga kapatid. Imagine starting from 500 AD, the Jerome Vulgate was already there. And take note, for 1,000 years na ginagamit. And that is the, the official book and Bible of the Roman Catholic Church. The Jerome Vulgate, Latin Jerome Vulgate. It is based on the Sinaticus and the Vaticanus po mga kapatid, which is now the Jerome Vulgate. Was taken from the library of Alexandria, Egypt, where it's which the source of many corruptions po mga kapatid. And hence, it becomes the text that classical, classical Latin, po mga kapatid, commonly known as the Jerome Vulgate, used by for 1,000 years. But there were there were people whom Erasmus also have seen in many libraries, have annotated and have ed and have pointed out some serious, okay, errors doon po sa mga translations na yon. Okay, so hindi ko alam po mga kapatid, if you if you Uh, if you're interested about this, but I'll tell you later on po mga kapatid, ano pong significance. When we study history, if you don't, if you are not a lover of history, you will be bored po mga kapatid as we look, up, look at all these things. But later on, it would shed light because this would help your appreciation why I have to go back to this as we studied on. Anong contribution nito sa King James Bible? Anong contribution nito sa iyo? Meron at malaki. Gusto ko pong tingnan po mga kapatid natin. And I'll say this as early as now, isa si Erasmus na ginagamit para magkaroon tayo ng pure text ngayon, para may karoon tayo ng pure text na paghuhugutan ng ating mga King James translators. Okay? Kung wala itong work na ito, pivotal, very, very essential itong work po niya po mga kapatid para magiging basis ng mga King James translators later on po mga kapatid. So after that examining all the libraries throughout his entire life po mga kapatid he spent his time in the great libraries devouring all the books he could find he moved constantly after he had exhausted the library yun ang trabaho niya eh. doon lalo na sa France sa Europe and from libraries and bookshops of the city then he wrote that he had acquired so after lahat ng mga kuha niya he wrote it mga kapatid all that many manuscript that he needed to to assistant po mga kapatid to help carry them to plenty of time to arrange them. So ganun ang ginagawa niya. Pagkatapos sa library, lista, sulat po mga kapatid, note, tapos move na naman sa iba. Ano nakukuha? Sulat, note, and lahat ng iyon po mga kapatid. He moved constantly from place to place after he devoured all those libraries po mga kapatid. And Erasmus wrote, okay? Erasmus wrote po mga kapatid to a friend very early in his career. And he said, mga kapatid, sa kanyang letter, sabi niya, quote, I am comparing Greek manuscripts. Sabi niya, I am determined to, sabi niya, devout myself to uncover or to undiscover copies of epistles which I burn to handle. Alam niyo, I burn to handle. This is an old expression, I burn, okay, with you. Or I burn of you. Pag sinabing I burn, that was an expression also of the Bible, marry than to be burned. Or marry than burn, not, not to be, than burn. Ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, na yung excessive passion, excessive passion, or parang yung tinatawag natin, yung kanyang, kanyang craving po mga kapatid. Sabi niya, I burn to handle. So I, I am comparing all the manuscript, okay, Greek manuscript, and I burn to handle. So nandun yung excessive passion niya po desire niya mga kapatid na hindi na siya makaantay on how he should put them together and collect and make his own project later on to to remove all those mga errors and mga perceived corruptions na nakikita niya so hindi lang po ang ang mga corruptions mga kapatid nakikita natin hindi lang dito sa panahon natin nag-uumpisa po yun napakatagal na po yun na labanan ng corruptions na ininakaw ang salita ng Dios na wala dito So akala lang natin sa King James versus the modern version, prutas lang to resulta pero yung balik back from the beginning, may labanan na, na ganun po mga kapatid. Dapat natin maintindihan yun. Okay? So he, he, he went to Venice, to Italy because of that mga kapatid. 
And those are also mga lugar na Italy and Venice po mga kapatid. Uh, it had the world's only native Greek-speaking teachers. So he go there and take advantage, mag, mag-inquire, magpaturo po mga kapatid. And he give his reasons for going to Italy in a poem. So he wrote a poem po mga kapatid and, and to tell us what's his reason why he went to to Italy. Let me quote okay, his poem according to him. Okay. Suck every book like a bee to know the Greek and Latin in compass land and sea casting everything other side. Your honor, your glory, your study is this that Christ be your guide. So that's end of quote. That's his poetry po mga kapatid. So he went there to suck every book like a bee. I mean the sucking bee po mga kapatid. To know the Greek and Latin in compass land and sea. <laughs> Yun po ang kanyang obsession. Let me say that an obsession. Amen. Casting everything other aside. Yan. Para lang ma- makuha po niya yung lahat ng iyan. So, and uh, he also wrote in 1505 po mga kapatid. While there he wrote a book Okay, on proper pronunciation of in, of of ano po ancient Greek. So he wrote a book in 1505 and in in uh, proper pronunciation of ancient Greek because of this as early as 1505 he wrote to a friend another letter niya sa kanyang kaibigan. Sabi niya I I shall sit down to holy scriptures with my whole heart and to devote the rest of my life to it. All these three years, I have been working entirely at Greek and have not been playing with it. So he's really serious. I am working with the Greek and had not been playing with it. So in 15, ano po mga kapatid, 1505 is about almost 40 years old po mga kapatid. And he's still working on the Greek po mga kapatid. He's still working. Although kahit wala na po siya doon sa, ano, wala na po siya doon sa Italy, But nung dinala niya lahat ng nakukunan niya, natutunan niya, he's still working on it. I shall sit down, sabi niya, to the Holy, I shall sit down to Holy Scripture with my whole heart and devote the rest of my life to it. So this, that is his obsession. That is his life's passion po mga kapatid. And he devote himself there. And sabi niya, and have not been playing with it. Unlike many Greek teachers, they have been playing scholars. They have been playing ng mga ano, gods po mga kapatid. They have been playing as authority po mga kapatid. And they're playing with the Greek text mga kapatid and trying to deceive many and others po mga kapatid. But this man over here had been serious in providing the people of having a pure Greek text mga kapatid of the Bible and he did not even know that his work, life work po mga kapatid will become the source and will be produced into a magnificent translation in other languages po mga kapatid and become an influence to many many souls that have been saved using the word of God preached in the gospel of our salvation po mga kapatid at the age of 40 he became the world's leading authority on the Greek language Because he he read, uh, he wrote some books about about studying Greek and also mga kapatid, ha, the proper pronunciation of Greek, and he became the leading authority at the age of 40, around 1506 or 1505 po mga kapatid, concerning the Greek language and the Greek New Testament, and as such po mga kapatid, dahil sa kanyang kasikatan, he was hired at England, mga kapatid, to teach Greek. And he became a Greek professor when he reached to England at 1505 po mga kapatid at Cambridge University. You'd like to know about Cambridge? You don't like to know about I mean I mean Erasmus? Amen. You search for a Cambridge history about Erasmus po mga kapatid. He has been hired as a Greek professor at the Cambridge University and he already declined by the way before he reached that he already declined a lot of offers and invitation to many professorships po mga kapatid in Europe dahil hindi niya dinecline niya kasi ang trabaho niya that time was to search for greek manuscripts so eight years before the printing of the greek new testament po mga kapatid its composition was central in his thinking so imagine kinompose mo na niya lahat niyan eight years 
Kasi po mga kapatid, kung makikita mo po mga kapatid, I'd like you to understand, his first edition of the Greek text is 15, 15, ano po, 1516. Now, I'd like you to take note, sige, tatayo na lang po ako mga kapatid, no? I'd like you to take note that from 15, pagkabalik niya sa, from Italy po mga kapatid, pagkabalik niya sa England, okay, pagkabalik niya sa England, okay, after Italy, pagkabalik niya sa England, from 1500 to 1508, Okay, from 1508, that's about 8 years po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. No? 8 years. Anong ginagawa niya for that 8 years po mga kapatid? He composed, compiled po mga kapatid. And he started, he started to, to transfer it, to, to put that in print. This is now from 16 or 15, ano po mga kapatid? 1508 to 16, ano po? To 1516. That, that is now... Exactly po mga kapatid, the length ng kanya pong pag-transfer into that Greek edition para ma-produce. But even nakabalik na po siya doon sa ano, sa sa England po mga kapatid. But he compiled, he spent his time compiling for eight years bago pa po, po ginawa po niya yung kanyang Greek edition po of 1516 po mga kapatid kung saan natapos. He spent his life for eight years its composition and it was the central, okay? In his thinking po mga kapatid. So, kaya nga, makikita pa natin, the letter of of uh, October 28, 1507, letter niya to Aldous Manusius shows what an important place the Greek New Testament had now taken in his plans. And he had been directly working to the text much before 1507. According to some historians, sabi ni Fraud, sabi niya, His, he was known to be preparing an edition of the Greek text, Greek New Testament, with a fresh translation, which is Latin. Kasama, alongside with the Latin, he had been at work over the Greek manuscript for many years. And the work was approaching completion. That's 1507. The work was approaching completion. Yun lang po yun. Yung pagkukumpile lang po yun po mga kapatid. Para i-finalize niya. And the edition was in great part prepared during a stay in England. So Erasmus said, sa kanyang letter po mga kapatid, sabi niya, I am losing my eyesight. So while on work on 1500 to 1508, while teaching also at the University of Greek, doon sa University of uh, Cambridge University po mga kapatid, sabi niya, I am losing my eyesight from, amen, sabi niya, from overwork. So, and he said, I toil over Greek texts. Okay, this is quoted by uh, the life and letters of Erasmus by fraud po mga kapatid, page 76. I am losing my eyesight from overwork and toiled over Greek texts. So even Yale University po mga kapatid states that it is often reported that printer Johan, okay, or Johan po mga kapatid, Froben asked Erasmus to work quickly. Amen. He asked Erasmus quickly. So pero ayo mamadalin ni Erasmus was told to to ano po mga kapatid to work it quickly and he even lie about it mga kapatid. And Yale responds, Erasmus himself wrote that he had been working on his edition for two years between 1512 and 15 ano po mga kapatid 14. But you know mga kapatid that's not uh, kasi pinakita nila pinapalabas nila sa mga critics ni Erasmus na minamadali ni Erasmus. No, it was not. It was a lifelong, more than 40 years of preparation bago po siya nag-release ng Greek text po, mga kabatid. Amen. So, he, he, he has this oldest and the best manuscript he gathered so far po, mga kabatid. Sabi niya, we have seen that Erasmus was surrounded with Bible manuscripts from his childhood. Amen. In, in a 1460s pa po mga kapatid until the publication of his Greek text. You just think about that. How many years of that? From ano po, from 1466 to 15, ano po mga kapatid? 16. That's around 40 years po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. He worked for a dozen of years po mga kapatid just to produce a text itself. And the preparation had taken years. Hindi po, hindi po minamadali. Hindi po ganun ka ano po mga kapatid. And he struggled for so many years. He have been patiently laboring at his New Testament, and it's not something na 
kagaya lang ng mga NIV, bigla nilang lumabas, kagaya ng mga many Greek texts ngayon na bigla nilang lumabas sa putok. At hindi mo malayan kung saan. Amen. Many of Erasmus' critics have misrepresented him. Po mga kabatid. And mga 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 modern teachers ngayon who who is who is ignorant also of history po mga kabatid. And Erasmus state, sabi ni Erasmus, the only way to determine the true text is to examine the early codices. Okay? My work has been to restore a buried literature. This is his testimony. My work has been to restore a buried literature, recall divines from their hair splitting to a knowledge of the New Testament. That's why his work was to get and get all that he can in throughout history in all side that just because history at that time was just dictated by the Roman Catholic Church dictated by the Vatican but these men over here have seen the other side po mga kabatid have collected those the copies and the, the scriptures of those who had been martyr of those who had been burned those those scrolls and manuscripts that they died for their lives And it was just displayed and posted in libraries and nobody dared to look for it. But not with Erasmus. Erasmus have spent his lifetime po, mga kapatid, just to have that and to produce a combination of all those beautiful manuscripts to produce a Greek text po, mga kapatid, that was finally printed and published amen, in 1516 po, mga kapatid. And Erasmus, in his dedication to his Greek New Testament, sa dedication niya doon sa kanyang Greek New Testament, sabi niya, I perceive that teaching which is our salvation was to be had in a much purer and more lively from a uh, lively form if sought at the fountainhead and drawn from the actual sources than the pools and runnels of corrupt Catholic texts and teachings And so I have revised the whole New Testament against the standard of the Greek originals. So, ano ginawa niya? Sabi niya, I have sought, amen, eh, kung gusto mong magkaroon ng pure concept of salvation, gusto mong makakuha ng pure text about the hope of your salvation, kung saan kinukuha, sabi niya, it must be coming from the fountainhead which drawn the actual sources. Okay? not from the pools and runnels, mga kapatid, of the corrupt Catholic texts and teachings. So, I have revised the whole New Testament, amen, against those standards na ginagawa po ng Vatican po, mga kapatid. And Erasmus said this text was solidly based po, mga kapatid. Erasmus suggested that he had consulted many manuscripts po, mga kapatid. So, in fact, Erasmus' own manuscript collection was so large and so valuable po, mga kapatid. It was co covetously si uh, seized by custom when he left England to go to the continent to finalize his Greek text in ano po, mga kapatid, in 1514. Can you imagine that? Kinuha pa ng custom. Amen. Hinuli pa. Amen. And he protested saying that they had stolen the labors of his life. Saglit lang. Okay? Sabi na, ninakaw ang aking labor of my life. And that's the manuscript po, mga kapatid. But later on, it was returned to him in few days. After sinis, binalik lang din naman sa kanya. And so many false, ano po, assertions na sinasabi niya, repeated over and over po, mga kapatid, sa kay Erasmus concerning sa kanyang mga, concerning sa kanyang Greek text po, mga kapatid. Like marami po mga kilalang mga teachers ngayon, si William Combs po mga kapatid of Detroit Theological Seminary. He writes in error. Sinasabi niya that, sabi niya, sabi niya concerning kay, kay, kay Erasmus, Greek text, sabi niya, seven manuscripts were used by Erasmus in Basel to compile the Greek text. That's wrong. Because he spent his 40 years trying to, to search. It's not just seven. And all of these were property of Dominican Library. He was not just spending in Dominican Library. All the libraries in Italy and also in France, po mga kapatid, in Paris, po mga kapatid, para makakuha lang. So that's, 
That's really a slander, a blatant lie po mga kabatid. And they said po mga kabatid that Erasmus traveled to Basel and used the few Greek manuscripts were there as the basis of his text. That is an ignorant claim po mga kapatid. That's not true po mga kapatid. This critic mga kapatid, si Com pre pretend to know further of what we call Erasmus Greek text because they said that they're, they're, these are Greek teachers itong mga nagsasabi na ito. Amen. So sabi niya, ang source daw ni Erasmus ay slimmest of manuscript resource and the feeblest of manuscript resource. Very, very blatant lie, mga kapatid. Hindi po yan totoo. Now, let's, let's ask Cambridge history. The Cambridge history of the Bible affirms. Ito po yung sinasabi ni, ng Cambridge kung saan siya nag-aaral. Sabi niya, it corresponds to the manuscript tradition concerning the Greek text in Erasmus, which fact prevailed in the Greek church and not until in the end of the 19th century were editions proposed that differed Westcott and Hort other than on points of detail. At sabi, sabi po niya po mga kapatid that, that uh, we should attribute to Erasmus okay, yung the creation of Greek, uh, sabi niya, we should not attribute to Erasmus the creation of a received text but only the transmission from the manuscript text. That's true. Hindi, hindi, hindi dapat natin i-attribute kay Erasmus na nag-create siya ng Greek text but rather he just, ano po mga kapatid, collect them and many, many of them, and compiled them because he was not translating the Greek text. That's a very, very ano po, uh, a wrong understanding that you think that Erasmus was translating a Greek text. No, he collected and judged po mga kapatid and com diligently compared many, many of the texts po mga kapatid and put it in his Erasmus Greek text po mga kapatid. So I'd like you to understand that there are today, huh, today, huh, there are at least 5,200 manuscript of Greek New Testament. Okay? So we're not saying na Greek New Testament na yun, na lahat na kompleto ng New Testament. Mga copies, yung mga cod codices po mga kapatid, isang page, tatlong page, isang book, nagkakalat po, makukollect, yun, yun, yun yung evidences ng history na makikita po natin. So it was collected that at least there are 5,200 manuscript collected. Greek New Testament and KJV critics, the King James critics ignore the fact that ito pong over 99% agreed with Erasmus. Itong 5,200 manuscript Greek text, 99% agreed with Erasmus po mga kapatid. But only 0, 0.00 something po mga kapatid, 8 that agreed doon po sa, ano po, sa modern version po mga kapatid. Amen. The agreement of this tiny minority is far from unanimous. It's very far from unanimous on many changes po mga kapatid. Kaya they lied blatantly po mga kapatid before us. to mga, mga modern, mga critic, modern version. They lied before us that, that uh, yung minority daw ang text na ginagamit ng King James. No, it's wrong mga kapatid. Baliktad. Only 44 out of 500 ay 5,200 Greek texts agreed, almost agreed, all agreed to to ano po nga, to Iraq, Erasmus Greek texts po mga kapatid. But only 44 did not agree. So ibig sabihin, itong 44 corrupt ones disagrees with the NIV, with the ESV, with the NASV po mga kapatid, RV, and lahat ng mga VV dyan ng mga na mga modern po mga kapatid. So if you look at just the statistics po mga kapatid, napaka layo, no? So without the preservation of the text, okay, of text by God po mga kapatid. Sabi ni sabi ni Eras, ay sabi ni James White, James White is a known Bible critic. He wrote the King James only controversy. King James only is a controversy. James White is a wala po he, he may be a, he may he may sound a good teacher po mga kapatid, but he has no final authority but his own James White he has no final authority by his own he don't believe that we still have the word of god perfect word of god in our hand and they do that because they wanted to become their own authority and to be the authority of others sabi ni sabi ni ano 
Sabi ni eh, sabi ni James White. Let me quote. Sa kanyang book po mga kapatid ni James White um, ng The King James Only Controversy. Okay, written in 1995, written by James White in pages ano po 58, in page 58 and 59. Let me quote this ano po. Sabi niya, Erasmus guessed or Erasmus hunched and lead him to the reading which must match almost every uh, every Greek text today. So he guessed. How how could how could he guess or hunched on those things po mga kapatid? Na it almost mga kapatid match every Greek manuscript known today. Ang hirap naman manghula out of 5,200, amen, 99% agrees with Erasmus. Ang hirap naman manghula noon. Paano nagiging accurate and 44 lang na makikita natin hindi nag-agree kay Erasmus? How, how about that, mga kapatid? Kung buhay pa si Erasmus po, mga kapatid, He would find that that in the main and had managed to match almost 5,200 Greek manuscript and wisely ignored the other 44 corrupt ones, po mga kapatid. Kaya nga if if the critic will just apply statistics and analytics, po mga kapatid, how how could you be in favor to 44 over 5,200, po mga kapatid? Kung without the preservation of the text. Okay, without the preservation of these texts and the word of God po mga kapatid. And sige, alisin natin. Given na walang preserved word of God, try guessing all of them for yourself. Try to to create a Greek text that would agree to 5,200. Mahirap yun kung guesswork lang. Amen. At yung 4,400 ay yung 444 na hindi nag-agree po doon kay Erasmus po mga kapatid, out of 5,200 ay ito po yung nag-agree sa Jerome Vulgate. Latin Vulgate po mga kapatid. So they're wrong. Si Combs wrong. Si James White wrong. Lahat po na yan. And um, the origin sabi ni Combs, the origin of the TR or the Textus Receptus go back to Roman Catholic priest and Christian humanist Desiderius Erasmus okay for 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 ano po mga kapatid for for their information po mga kapatid for their information Erasmus did not practice as a priest yes he went to monasteries but he spent his lifetime of he did not experience his even his first mass or one mass did not conducted a one mass He has been critics. Bamaya, titignan natin po mga kapatid. Okay, Erasmus on Rome. If, we, if it will allow us po mga kapatid. Wala. Makikita po natin. Though truly false information, hindi po niya minamadali. Uh, napakadami po ang kanya pong, ang kanya pong ano po mga kapatid. So careful. Itong mga critics na yun often asserts. Napakadami. That Erasmus did not have the manuscript we have today. Mga kapatid, in, in fact, ang truth of the matter is he had access to every reading during those times more than anybody today. Amen. And he had access to every reading currently extant and rejected those matching the Catholic Vulgate po, mga kapatid. And Erasmus even asked his acquaintance, amen, to check the Vaticanus in Rome And he was very aware, mga kapatid, of the massive body of errors of the Vaticanus. But he knew of the old Itala. Okay, Bible. The Itala, okay, Bible. Ano po ito? Majority sa mga Greek texts na nakita niya at sa Latin text po, mga kapatid, is influenced by Jerome Vulgate and there is no 1 John 5.7. You know where did Erasmus discovered the First John five seven in our Blessed King James Bible? Now, why our King James Bible has First John five seven? 
and the rest of the modern version don't have First John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Jerome Vulgate don't have First John 5, 7. But the Itala, which is back, traced back from first century Bible, old Itala, because ang Jerome Vulgate is a Latin text. Nauna pa itong Latin Bible na ito before Jerome Vulgate. Nauna po ito for at least 400 years before, before Jerome Vulgate was, was printed or was, was produced po mga kapatid. So but the old Itala Bible contains 1 John 5, 7 in which we have. That's why yun po, we owe it the 1 John 5, 7. The, ang tawag po niyan po mga kapatid, the Johannine 1 John 5, 7. Ako po. We owe that to, to Erasmus. And, and uh, gusto ko makita lang natin po mga kapatid, in, in 1519, okay? Gusto ko makita nyo, in 1519, the, the edition of, the Greek edition of 1519 of Erasmus was taken by Luther. It was the basis of Luther Bible. Tindihan po natin? It was the Greek text where Luther translated the German, his Luther Bible or the German Bible from the 1519. Okay? Greek text of, ano po mga kapatid? And guess what? In 1522, where, ano po mga kapatid? Where uh, William Tyndale, okay? Will, will Tyndale po mga kapatid? Okay? Get his Tyndale Bible, New Testament, from 1522. So do you see that? It becomes the source of a Protestant Bible doon sa Germany and the source of the Bible in England in 1522 and the, the 1536 po mga kapatid is one of the sources din po mga kapatid ng King James Translator. Ng KJV. So ang point natin po mga kapatid, so sa Tyndale, okay, isa sa mga sources ng, ng King James is Tyndale but Tyndale get also from 1522 at the same time from 1536 become also the source of the one of the sources of the King James translators. You, you, do you see that? You see that contribution? He, he, he find that from the old Itala Bible po mga kapatid. Which is Latin po mga kapatid. Amen. Makikita po natin it's very in agreement po mga kapatid lahat ng ito. Okay. So, na nakatuwa po yun. Na naka, kung wala yun, ako po. Uh, he was aware of the of the corrupt corruptions of Latin Vulgate. That's why he leaned much on the Itala. And guess what? When he compared the Itala Bible with the Greek New Testament or Greek manuscript na kanya pong nakukuha, in his research, it agrees with the Itala Bible po mga kapatid. Not with that Jerome Vulgate. Kaya tinago na lang ng mga Catholic at hindi inalaw na makuha ng iba, tinago na lang ng Catholic doon sa mga libraries po ng poor display because they destroyed many of those copies sa mga lugar na kanilang pinupuntahan po mga kapatid. Okay? So, dapat importante yan sa isang Kristiyano na malaman natin. Hindi lang tayo basta-basta, ba't gumamit ako ng King James? Hindi lang po ang King James ay perfect in its text. But I'm saying po mga kapatid, it is also po mga kapatid it is coming also from a blessed fountain of source and where you could trace po mga kapatid kasi kaya madaming maraming nag nagkikritis ah oh, ang, ang King James galing naman yan sa Erasmus Greek text madami naman so yun ang misrepresentation but one thing they did not know po mga kapatid Christianity the English Bibles owed it much the pure English Bible owed it much to this man over here this Darius Erasmus po mga kapatid. Kaya importante na makilala, matutunan natin tong mga bagay po na ito po mga kapatid. Okay? So Erasmus wrote, even po mga kapatid, sabi niya, there were persons who were talking of mending religions and even mending the Lord's Prayer. So he was discussing about the corruption of the, of the ano po, Jerome Vulgate po mga kapatid. Sabi niya, my chief fear is that with the revival of the Greek lit literature, there may be a revival of paganism. Okay, yun, yun ang kanya, kasi against po siya doon. There are Christians who are Christians only in name, mga kabatid. So, uh, Frederick Nolan writing in, in 1815, he states po mga kabatid, It is indisputable that he was acquainted with every variety which known to us. So, he was talking to, he was talking to 
Erasmus, sabi niya, he was acquainted with every variety which is known to us, having distributed them in two principal classes, one of which correspond with the com Complutitions editions and the other with the Vatican manuscript. Sabi niya, Erasmus published an edition which corresponds with the text which had been since discovered to prevail the great body of Greek manuscripts. So they, they, they acknowledge that he discovered a great body of Greek manuscripts. Not just few po mga kabatid. And nakikita po natin. And in addition to, to that manuscript which Erasmus owned mga kabatid, and he, he also seen it by himself, po mga kapatid. And he gathered all the readings of the whole Europe through a, through a broad of friendships and connections. And he noted, mga kapatid, sabi niya, I have room, sabi ni Erasmus, I have room full of letters from men of learning. Amen. I have room full of letters from men full of learning, po mga kapatid. Kaya, Erasmus and the Greek New Testament and the early Christian writers hailed him and appreciate his works. Mga early Christian writers ah, and always attributing to him itong mga bagay na ito po mga kapatid. Even the King James translators and the early translators po mga kapatid. And uh, yung ano po mga kapatid, yung critics about 1 John 5-7 because they don't know history po mga kapatid. Amen. And hindi nila namalayan yung mga NIV, mga ASB, if they go back to Vatican. Because it's coming from the Jerome Vulgate po, mga kapatid. So, may mga successors po si Erasmus. You will know um, Robert Stephanus, where we get the Stephanus Greek text. And Biza po, mga kapatid, or even Elzever. So, no need for us to learn, but there are things na dapat, and also po mga kapatid, si Scrivener. So ito yung mga Greek text po mga kapatid na mga successor ni Erasmus. So si Stephanos po mga kapatid, 1550. So no, ito yung mga known na mga makikita po natin kay Stephanos. Ito yung mga ano po ni uh, Greek text, New Testament ni ano, yung mga successor niya, si Stephanos, Greek text. Beza, Greek text, and even Scrivener. Scrivener's Greek text. Ang point natin, ito yung mga available na makikita natin, but it is almost identical with the Erasmus, Stephanus. Alam nyo po saan galing ang Scrivener's Greek text? Galing po siya sa King James, translate pabalik sa Greek. And nung binalik sa Greek, alam niyo po ano resulta? Almost identical po mga kapatid with the Erasmus Greek New Testament. The, the Scribners, mga kapatid. Almost identical. It was, actually, Scribner is one of the translator committee po mga kapatid, okay, in 1881, ng revised version. Guess what? Ito yung mga critic din, ng revised version, o ng Westcott and Hort. And guess what? Ano nangyari po niya sa kanyang curiosity po mga kapatid? He translated, okay, the King James, kasi Greek teacher po ito eh. He's known on his Greek po mga kapatid. He, he attempted to create a Greek textus receptus on his own. How did he, trans, eh, how did he create a Greek text, textus receptus in his own? By translating the King James back into Greek. Can you imagine that? So he translates Scribner's is from KJV, look at that, from, from ano po, AV, 1611 po mga kapatid, was, okay, tra he translated po ito back to Greek. At itong Greek text na ito, ito yung tawag natin Scribner's Greek text. And guess what po mga kapatid, itong Greek text ni Scribner's is almost identical with Erasmus. 98% identical with Erasmus Greek text. So, he translated to, to AV 1611, from AV 1611 to Greek. Ang tawag niya na ay Greek, Greek, Scribner's Greek New Testament. Tapos, binalik niya, ay, ang, ang kanyang translate, translation diligently compared, it was almost identical with 
Erasmus po mga kabatid. There are ar around just 59 places po mga kabatid. Just 59 places where it does not dis uh, it disagree with Erasmus. But to, look at that. How many words did it compare? How many percent po mga kabatid? So almost identical with the Erasmus. So what's my point po mga kabatid? Bakit almost identical with the Erasmus? Because Erasmus is also one of the sources of our AV1611 po mga kabatid that you have now. So malalaman mo may trace kahit pa ang critic na si Scribner's, si FHA Scribner po mga kabatid would say, okay, we'll, we'll say po mga kabatid, we'll say po mga kabatid when he translated the English to Greek, whew, it resulted almost identical to Erasmus Greek text. The reason is, it's because it uh, the AV 1611, one of sources of the AV 1611 that we have now is the Erasmus Greek text. One of the source of the AV 1611 is the Tyndale Bible, which is the Tyndale Bible coming from the Erasmus 1522 and the King James Bible is also one of the sources of the King James Bible is also the 1536 of Erasmus. And what about that? So no wonder the result of the translation from English to Greek, uh, to Greek po mga kapatid, would almost be identical with Erasmus na Greek text na makikita po natin. Yun ang point natin po mga kapatid, na dapat natin ma-acknowledge. Ganun kabuti ang Panginoon, ganun kagaling ang pag, ano po ng Panginoon po mga kapatid. Kaya, and Hindi pwedeng masabi ng minority. How could it be kama minority po mga kapatid na napaka-importante, napaka-ganda? So, do you imagine the irony po mga kapatid of a well-meaning scholars who state that foreign translation should be made from the original Greek? That's an irony. Sabi ng mga ano, oh, sabi ng mga Greek Greek freak, ang tawag namin doon, mga Greek freak. Sabi ng mga mga TR man na iba na, oh, ang, ang, ang Greek dapat ang final authority. Kung may translation man, dapat galing sa Greek. At ano ang basis nila na Greek? Anong available Greek nila? Scribner's 1881. This is 1881. Scribner's Greek text 1881. Oh, you know, yun ang text ng so Sabi na, doon galing ang King James. Hindi doon galing ang King James. Ang Scribner's galing sa King James. Baliktad. Yun yung irony. Kaya sabi nila, oh, dapat pag mag-translate into another language, dapat kukuha doon sa pinaka-source, doon sa Greek. E ano available natin? Anong available natin po mga kapatid na na ano po na na mga Greek text? We have 15 Stephanos 1550 po mga kapatid. We have ano po Biesa which is 1630 po mga kapatid o 1650. So what about that po mga kapatid? Tapos na ang King James o oh. ay translate na no? Or na, mali pala ako po mga kapatid, 15, uh, 1598 pala ito, 1598. Tapos Scribner's 1881. So ito yung medyo available po mga kapatid. And saan ito galing? It, it, it agrees with the Erasmus New Testament. It agrees with Biesa po mga kapatid. Itong Scribner was translated from the King James Bible. So ang irony, bakit sa sabihin na hindi po pwedeng i-translate o kung mag-translate man galing sa Greek Kung saan man mga kabatid ang ang Scribner na Greek text available nito na galing naman sa King James Bible. Kaya that's a great irony po mga kabatid na hindi nat na inconsistency ng mga Bible critic po mga kabatid. Okay, they're using it to translate from the King James po mga kabatid. So the only other textus receptus Greek New Testament in printed was that's the 1550 na Stephanos. Kay Biesa Stephanos and Scribner. That's the available po mga kapatid. At babalik kayo doon. So, mga, maraming inconsistency. Amen. Amen. So, ano pa, bilis ng oras, no? Bilis ng oras. Pag, pag history yung pag-usapan, ganito talaga, no? Just bear with us po mga kapatid. Yun ang gusto ipunto, no? That, um, Yes, ma ano, magagamit ba ng mga Greek teachers ang Scribners? It's a great tool. Pero tayo na, na hindi nakakaintindi ng Greek, mga kapatid, bakit babalik ka pa sa Scribner? Nagaling naman yan sa King James. In the first place, hindi ka naman nakakaintindi ng Greek. What is the what is the advantage na babalik ka sa Scribners? Greek text. Sabi na, yun daw ang textus receptus. 
mga kapatid. Ang King James daw galing sa Textus Receptus at ang understanding lang, King James galing sa Scribners. Very poor in history. That's very wrong po mga kapatid. You, you, you could use that as excellent tool kung ikaw alam ang Greek. Pero why should I go there when I have already the King James Bible which is also the source of the Scribners text? Amen. So, yun po ang problema. You know, Erasmus, okay, and the vernacular Bibles po mga kapatid. Erasmus and the vernacular Bibles. You know po, napaka, kung i-compare mo, i-compare mo ang mga vernacular Bibles. You remember po mga kapatid, ano yung mga vernacular Bibles na natutunan natin? Yung mga pure stream, yung Gothic, Anglo-Saxon Bibles. You remember that? The Gothic, Anglo-Saxon Bible, the Wycliffe Bible, and other German Bible, Dutch Bible. It is exactly po mga kapatid, accurate accurate with the Erasmus Greek text. I'm telling you, ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, this is not a hidden agenda, secret agenda, dahil itong mga vernacular Bibles before po mga kapatid, just like us, as Wycliffe, as, as Coverdale Bible and Tyndale Bible po mga kapatid, translators, were, they were not Greek only. But ito pong kay Erasmus na Greek text was was properly and diligently compared with other manuscripts in other languages po mga kapatid. So makikita po natin that it agree to many many of the ano po mga kapatid. Many of these, okay? Sobrang sa sobrang sikat ni Erasmus sa England, nire-request palagi po ito ni ano eh. Nire-request palagi ni King King Henry the 8th. Sabi niya, you sabi ni King Henry even sabi niya, you have applied your talents in advancement of Christian truth. And napaka na, daming mga phrases sa kanya yung France uh, uh, Francis the first of France po mga kapatid and uh, binibigyan siya ng marami pong he was offered with many positions of honor and profit in the academic world and yet he declined all of that Erasmus could have been very well famous pa more pero ang ginagawa niya he chose to collect and to study those Greek texts na makikita po niya po mga kapatid So napakarami nakukuha po niya ang mga ang iba po mga memorized scripture, mga naririnig niya sa mga inquisitions na maabang nagano po it leads his, to his curiosity, yung mga persecuted to death po mga kapatid, it leads to his curiosity po mga kapatid. So he studied many many of this vernacular the vernacular of Erasmus and the Itala Bible or the Italian Bible. Remember he went to Italy. That's why he has this access to the Itala Bible po mga kapatid. Which could date po mga kapatid. Ang Itala Bible, it reached mga around po 1st century from 100th century all the way to 1500th po mga kapatid. Imagine it, it was available the old Itala in the Italian library. So how many years is that? Jerome Vulgate is 500 po mga kapatid. 500 AD. Ito, the old Itala is 500, ay 100 to 1500 po mga kapatid. Makikita po natin. So he was acquainted. When you compare Erasmus and the Itala Bible po, mga kapatid, it is almost ano po, identical po, mga kapatid. Why? Because it was one of the sources po, mga kapatid, ni Erasmus po, mga kapatid. So if you compare po, mga kapatid, also of the, the, ano po, the, um, the Erasmus and the Gothic Bible, not only uh, ano po, the Erasmus and the Vernacular Bible, number one, the Itala Bible, Number two, mga kapatid, the Gothic Bible. It, if you compare Erasmus and the Gothic Bible, which we compare the King James and the Gothic Bible, they're almost alike. Remember in, in our previous lessons? Ganon din ang Erasmus at saka yung ano po mga kapatid, Gothic Bible. There, it's around 350 po mga kapatid. 350 AD po mga kapatid, to 1500 available. At, at ito po ay... By the way, ang Gothic Bible, that's the ay ang Gothic language po mga kapatid, the Anglo-Saxon po mga kapatid, that's the root of the Dutch mga kapatid, language, which is, which is Erasmus is a Dutch, which is uh, the same with the Germanic tongues po mga kapatid. Kaya, ano sila, familiar po siya sa Gothic Bible po mga kapatid. And also of course, if diligently compared, Erasmus diligently compared with the Anglo-Saxon Bible, they are almost So ang Anglo-Saxon Bible po mga kapatid, ang Erasmus text type is ang Anglo-Saxon type po mga kapatid. 
yung mga present na mga verses nandun po sa Anglo-Saxon, nandun sa Gothic, nandun sa Itala. If you if you if you trace po mga kapatid lahat ng iyon. Okay? So many things mga kapatid. The, uh, compare also the Erasmus and the German Bibles. Of course, Luther as the German Bible galing kay Erasmus. Kaya makikita mo po mga kapatid. Amen. At meron pang mga German Bible before kay before kay ano po mga kapatid kay kay Martin Luther it was written even in 600 AD po mga kapatid. Amen. So na, hindi po siya something na putok sa ano po mga kapatid lumabas na lang biglaan na nabulaga na lang lahat. No, it was diligently compared. It was diligently compared to the Dutch Bible pre The Dutch Bible, these are pre-Erasmus Bible, yet they are identical po mga kapatid. So looking, studying sa mga ano, maybe sa sunod siguro, ipa-flash ko sa inyo po mga kapatid, i-compare natin some evidences dito po. No? So even sa mga French Bibles, Erasmus is almost identical with them po mga kapatid. And much more sa mga Spanish Bibles and also yung mga English Bibles like Tyndale, like Wycliffe, like Coverdale Bible, like Greek Bible, not only with the Spanish Bible. Ano yung old na Spanish Bible po mga kapatid? The Valera of 1602. Imagine, if you, if you observe Erasmus and the Valera of 1602, the Spanish Bible, by the way, Valera 1602 is almost identical with the King James Bible. And guess what po mga kapatid? That's the pure Bible of the Spanish Bible speaking people the valera of 1602 not the rena valera of 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 1950 something po mga no no that's that's corrupt but the valera of 1602 that's the spanish bible makikita po natin is almost identical with the erasmus and and erasmus also po mga kapatid is one of the sources ng valera bible at ang spanish valera one of the sources of our King James Bible. Kaya, kaya sila related. Kasi sila connected. Ito yung stream na makikita natin sa kanila. Kikita natin ang stream. So saan galing na stream ang, ang Erasmus po mga kapatid? Back sa Itala Bible, back sa Gothic Bible, sa Anglo-Saxon Bible, sa mga Dutch Bible, sa German Bible, puma sa Spanish Bible, and the English Bibles. Yan po yung stream. Yun po yung flow ng water po kung saan tutungo ang lahat ng ito po mga kapatid. Okay? So, saan na nakikita po natin to? And of course, Erasmus, hindi na natin mapuntahan po mga kapatid. I'm sorry, but I tried my best na mabilisan natin, matapos natin si Erasmus, but I think it needed us ng isa pang, isa pang session. And ito yung mga boring part ng atin pong lesson dito sa King James. May, may mas boring pa dito po mga kapatid as we go on doon sa mga sa history ng preservation at kung paano, but We have to know this. We have to study this. You have to understand and see these things para hindi tayo, pag may lalapit sa'yo na critic, oh, galing naman yan kay Erasmus ang inyong ano. Si Erasmus naman ay humanist. Si Erasmus naman ay ganito kasi may mga misrepresentation today concerning kay Erasmus. If you don't know about that po mga kapatid, you will just agree with them ignorantly. Yan po yung problem. At least you have a fighting chance to let them know po mga kapatid. Now, hindi ganun. So if you understand history, if you learn history, remember history has always two sides. One is the Catholic version, the other one is the Christian version. We are in the Christian version of history po mga kapatid. Tandaan niyo lang po no. Makikita po natin. And these are the writings na makikita po natin by John Fox and mention and many 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 good historians po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. Okay? So we'll we'll talk about next week Erasmus on the lexicons and inspiration. Ano kasi Erasmus as the uh, the proponent as the ano po mga kapatid the, the maker of this Greek mga kapatid makikita po natin. We need to also to know anong ano ang ano ang kanyang stance concerning sa mga lexicons at ang ano ang kanyang stance concerning sa in, inspiration. Importante 'yun na tanungin mo. Tinanong natin si Wycliffe kung anong mga position niya concerning sa sa mga lexicons other la sa Latin ano po languages and Greek languages at anong position ni ni ano po sa inspiration naman and preservation ito bang si Erasmus na naniniwala na God preserved his words God inspired his words or hindi kung kasi ang mga translators ngayon hindi naman sila naniniwala na ganoon eh 
wala namang none of the NIV translators and the modern translator believed that uh, that what they have translated is inspired preserved because they believe that only the original the long lost original Greek and Hebrew were the inspired they, they they contain errors sa kanila lang may kaunti lang daw silang errors and lahat, but they could never claim perfection and all of that that's a, that's a very important position ng isang translator kung ikaw ay hindi ka naniniwala na you are translating the perfect word of god into another language you will not be careful you will not fear god po mga kapatid para sa iyo wala naman to eh pero importante yan na belief na conviction ng isa pong translator po mga kapatid or sa mga has something to do with the scriptures po mga kapatid amen so we'll talk about that maybe next week po mga kapatid and ito madugo kasi to eh Erasmus on Jesus Christ ano kaya ang doktrina niya anong belief niya kay Jesus Christ We have documentations. We have many documentations about that. Ano kaya ang belief niya kay Jesus Christ? Ano kaya ang belief niya sa Rome? About sa Pope, about sa mga monks, about sa mga priests. Ako po, madugo po ito. At ano bang position niya kay Calvin? Ano bang position niya against kay Luther or Calvin sa free will? Makikita mo that he's not Calvinist. But he is inclined on the Anabaptist position. Ito pong si. Ano kayang belief niya sa separation of church and state and all of that? Napakaganda po mga kapatid. Kaya lang, I, I was so excited to reach there but we have to discuss this. Greek New Testament. Ito pong vernacular Bibles. Haba pala. The, I, I thought I could just run through lahat ng iyon. So just bear with us dito every Monday. And if you are lover of history, if you're lover of of wisdom and knowledge sa salita ng Diyos, this is part of learning, understanding. Hindi man to milk na dapat natin ano, but we have to grow up this time and learn po mga kapatid with these men who love God enough to dedicate their lives po mga kapatid. Makikita mo yung turning point nung sasabihin ko po, pag-usapan natin next week po mga kapatid, nung siya po ay naka, nandun na siya sa Protestant country kung saan siya na-reared mag full blast na, not only sa kanyang ministry na pag translate ay sa pagcopy ng ng mga Greek editions niya po mga kapatid but he also full blast writing against Rome writing against uh, mga mga corrupt religious leaders on how they manipulate the people napaka napakaganda po mga kapatid makikita na i thank god na mayroon po mga tao na ginagamit ang Panginoon ganito by the way can i tell you something these lessons that we have I understand not many will appreciate this but this lesson that we have that we have learned ma that is not it is is not taught by many many bible schools and many many teachings and preachings mga kapatid they just don't care but but Christians you should care you could not be, love this book treasure this book not until po mga kapatid you understand so imagine and daming men dito behind the pure english bible and just were learning two people yet We still have a lot in the list. Okay? You just, you just think of how long you have to endure. <laughs> We have to endure all of this because this is very important. Many teachers have bypassed this, but me, I'm a lover of history. I, I, lo I love to read. I, I, lo I love things going on. And that's why I said, po mga kapatid, even si Santayana said, um, if you don't uh, uh, ano po, study history, you are doomed to repeat it. Amen. And Dr. Rockman said if sabi niya that um, that the only thing that men ever learn from history is that men never learn from history. So are you one of those people that men never learn from history? And you know, ano sabi ng Bible patungkol sa history? Those things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. They're written for our learning. We're not there in the time we're looking now at that but they're written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope amen ano ano may develop sa atin yan we might have hope i learned to appreciate men in spite they have been persecuted they have been killed they have been hated but they stood their ground they stood their ground because they're not just thinking of themselves but they are also thinking of their generation and the generation to come but their life is done tapos na their their life is just history but we're looking back so that we could also have the same courage 
and motivation that they have po mga kapatid. Nabibless ako po mga kapatid. Pagdating po dito, Erasmus on Jesus Christ, na po, napakaganda. Yung position niya sa inspiration, ang kanyang O sa Bible, ay napakaganda. Ang, 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 ang position niya patungkol kung sino si Kristo, napakaganda po mga kapatid. And you'll, you, you, will, you could say that he is a saved man, he is a Bible believer. Amen. And rightfully so, amen. I thank God that I could associate, uh, my Bible is associated with this man, not with the God-rejecting, Christ-rejecting na mga ano. You know, the modern version, the revised version, ang mga translators committee ng revised version don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. They don't believe on Trinity. And that's the root, that's the root, ano po mga kapatid, translation ng, ng mga modern version. Up to all the way sa NIV at pinaka-modern ngayon, Parehas lang sila ng stream. But this one is the only stream that is preserved po mga kapatid. That is a Trinitarian Bible. Amen. Who believe that Jesus Christ is God. At ang mga translators nito, naku po, napakaganda. Makikita din natin na ito. So sometimes nagiging impatient ako dito pag magturo ng history. Kasi so, masyadong advance eh. Because knowing that you still have a lot of things in the list po mga kapatid, to tell the people, sometimes you get excited and I'm tempted to skip at lahat ng ito, but no, I have to take patience and you need to be patient also po mga kapatid with us. So, join us every Monday dito po and uh, yun po ang learning po natin. Tomorrow, we will be studying rightly dividing the word of truth. Mga kapatid, I'd like to announce also that ilalunch ko po yung aking Facebook na page po mga kapatid account uh, today, maybe today, I've just to fix a little and I'd like to give you the link and I'd like you to Please pray for that. Support that po mga kapatid. If you'd like many lessons po mga kapatid, you could go there to my channel and ano po mga kapatid and uh, enjoy the many things. I, I have already uploaded 86 videos and uh, if you miss, I, I put that in ano po mga kapatid in a, in a playlist. You could, you could also support that and, and recommend or share. Okay? So yun po mga kapatid. So mamaya, mamaya. So uh, maybe I'll be posting Maya, maya. Lord willing po mga kapatid. And thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you everyone dito sa meeting room at ganun din sa ating FB Live. And good morning everyone and let's thank God and let's pray. Thank you Lord sa inyong kabutihan sa amin. Salamat sa buhay po ng mga inyong ginagamit sa history. Tulungan niyo kami maging patient din sa pag-aaral, sa pagtuturo sa mga bagay po na ito. Tulungan niyo kami na hindi magiging vain lang yung mga ginagamit niyo. You allowed Lord na magamit. We give glory sa inyong kapangyarihan sa buhay nila po Panginoon and we thank you Lord that may mga tao na nag-yield sa inyong pong kalooban and thank you also sa mga lesson na ito sana po ay ma would also take courage and start to appreciate Lord sa mga bagay na ginawa niyo not only for our salvation but also in providing us truth to be available today and we we give you glory Lord in all these things and this we ask in Jesus name Amen and Amen have a good day. God bless us 